This is a great place to start if you've got an interview for KPMG. It's gonna give you most of what you need to know to start preparing for your KPMG interview. Let's get you ready to pass your KPMG interview. In this video, I'm gonna give you an introduction about who KPMG is, including some fast facts you can use in your answer as to why you wanna work for KPMG. I'm gonna talk you through the application process and how it differs for graduates and professionals. I'm gonna walk through seven common questions that we came across from our research based upon applicants who have been successful in their interview and taken an offer from KPMG. And I'm gonna talk about what you can do next to best prepare for your upcoming interview. So let's talk about KPMG and what makes them great. KPMG is one of the big four professional services companies alongside PwC, Deloitte, and EY. They service 83% of the Fortune 500 companies and they have over 270,000 staff. These staff are based in 650 locations in 147 countries. KPMG's Family for Literacy program has distributed over 5 million books to low-income households and the children within them. KPMG ranked fourth in the Social Mobility Employers Index in the UK and has been in the top 10 in the last five years. KPMG has also been named as one of the top companies for gender equity, which means the equivalency of pay and rights for men and women within its organization and has been in that list for the last 13 years. Guys, before we carry on with this video, I just wanna ask you a small favor. Would you consider, if you've enjoyed this video, clicking the like button, dropping us a comment down below to let us know how we're doing, what company you'd like us to make a video about, or what you've got coming up, and maybe even subscribing to the channel to help us reach more people. Thank you. So what can you expect from KPMG's application process? It is gonna be different as compared to a professional and a graduate. And it is worth saying, I'm based in the UK. So I am basing a lot of my experience based upon the UK process. Though it is fair to say, based upon the consulting that I've done since 2015, that most MNCs or multinational companies have very similar application processes across the globe. For a professional, it's really common for you to expect a series of interviews. The first one would be a HR screener interview. Maybe somebody picked your CV off of LinkedIn or you've been referred by a recruiter or you've applied directly to the company. You would then progress through the hierarchy of that division or business unit to speak to a business manager, a director or even a partner and you should probably expect two or three interviews before you get the job. If you're a graduate applying to work for KPMG, this process is a little bit different. You'll have to do some sort of online tests, which in this case is maths and personality based, though there is no time limit on this. You then have to sit a online virtual assessment, which is called Transforming Small Businesses. This is what is known as a online job simulation Online job simulations are basically a screen where you have numerous questions and tabs where you're almost acting like a member of the business. You could be expected to answer numerical questions, situational judgment test style questions, reply to emails, even reply to... Now, a couple of those questions will be in the form of video interviews where you will have a question displayed on screen and have to reply with your answer. And you can expect this to last anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. Once you finish with this, then you'd be asked to attend an assessment center, which at KPMG is known as a virtual launch pad. Now, generally this tends to only have three items which appear in it, which is the general meet and greet, the group discussion, and the individual exercise, which could be a case study or a written exercise. And that's what you can expect across the whole process. Now, how long will this take? It really depends on the role and where you're applying to in terms of geographical location. But I would say as a rule of thumb, you would want to allow one to three months. Graduates tends to be slightly longer because it's tranched within particular intakes and there are a number of people coming in to do the same position at the same level. Whereas for professionals, this could be much faster particularly if there is a high demand within the business to get this position filled. Now, of course, whenever we put videos like this together and do our research, 
We try our best to meet as many different people's needs, but we are being reasonably general in the information that we are providing in the hopes that it can help as many people as possible. So here are the seven most common questions that we came across for KPMG's interview for 2024. This was based upon research online from candidates who had reported as interviewing at KPMG this year and accepting an offer at KPMG. Now I feel that this is really important because these are people who have been through the entire process and can report as accurately as anything can be taken based upon information on the internet from a non-verified source. So let's jump into these questions and I'm going to explain to you about how to think about answering each of these questions. Question number one, why do you want to work for KPMG? Now you'll notice at the start of this video, I went through about six or seven different facts about KPMG. And this is really something that is not that difficult to put together. It could take you 10, 15 minutes to research through the company's website. One thing that I would suggest is you want to make your facts specific to the country where you are applying to. And what you don't want to do is give lazy and generic answers because this isn't gonna make you discernibly different from anybody else. What it is going to do is just make you sound the same. Now the facts that I gave were specific and they covered financials, human resources, charity projects and awards. And there are lots of different types of facts that you could use. I suggest that you pick out five or six facts. If you want to make it personal, then you can relate it based upon something. So for example, if you're a woman and you're applying for KPMG, you could talk about the Gender Equity Award and how it appeals to you. One thing that you don't want to do is spend most of your answer talking about yourself because that is besides the point of the question. It's all about what do you know about KPMG and what effort have you put in to learn a little bit more about us. Now as an extension of this question, which may not come up in your first round interview, but may come up later on down the line, and I know a lot of people struggle with, which is what makes KPMG different from the other big four professional services companies? Now, although this question appears to be different, it's actually almost the same, because if you're giving specific and not generic facts about KPMG, then you're demonstrating how they are different. But if you wanna delve a little bit deeper into this, then you can look at their annual report, look at the chairman's statement, look at the managing partner statement or look at particular facts to do with the division that you are applying to. Now again this is something that's only going to take you about 15 minutes and you don't need to read the whole annual report. Just pick out the facts that you like and then deliver those in your answer. Question number two, why do you want to do this job or what does a day in the life of this role look like? Now these two questions are really very similar and they can be broken down into two parts. The first and the second part can both be learned from the job description. Something that I highly recommend that you do when you're preparing for an interview for any company is to scrutinize the job description. This is as long as the job description is actually helpful, i.e. it tells you about key responsibilities, the things that you will be doing on a daily basis and also the skills and experiences that you need to be able to do this job well. Now it could be when you're looking at this for KPMG that this isn't readily apparent. Maybe the job description doesn't provide a lot of information or is a bit too salesy. In which case what I suggest that you do is is take the title of the job or a similar title if it's very specific to KPMG. Pop that into Google and try and find other job descriptions where it's a little bit more descriptive about what you're going to be doing. Now, what are the two parts of answering that question? Well, part number one is really just about explaining what you're going to be doing in the job. This is very important if you're delivering a one-way video interview because what happens in a higher view style interview or whatever the system or software it is that they're using is that your answers will be transcribed and the transcription will then be passed to look for particular keywords or phrases which show that you are a good match for the job. So they're actually using the job description that they have provided you as a marking scheme for your answer. 
Now ideally, I'd say you wanna spend about half your time talking about basically what is the job and what you'll be doing. The second half of your answer, you're gonna to want to take the time to pick out two, three, maybe even four key skills or experiences, say that you have them and provide the proof. And this must be a specific and measurable fact. For example, if I was just to say, I'm really good at sales, the question that's probably going through your mind is, well, according to what? If I said to you, I'm good at sales because I spent three months as a double glazing telesales person making 12 appointments a week and doing 600 cold calls a week based upon that. Now all of a sudden we have proof, evidence that shows that we are good at the thing that we say we're good at rather than otherwise it's really just our opinion. Question number three, how do you make decisions? Now this on the face of it doesn't appear to be a competency-based question. Competency-based questions tend to take the format of, tell me about a time when you give me an example of teamwork, leadership, interpersonal skills. This is more like a strength-based question. So the initial reaction of most people when they get a question like this is really to say, well, I'm really good at making decisions or I bear in mind, you know, all the different factors that are involved in managing my time and so on and so forth. But really you can still use the star or the situation, task, action, result, style of answer to fit this format of question. How do you make a decision? Well, before I make a decision, I make sure to have a reasoned and level approach in terms of what are the other factors that needs to go into making that decision. Do I have all the information available at my disposal? And what other things have I got on my schedule at that time that may affect my ability to commit to that decision? For example, there was a time when, and you can then provide your example of making a significant decision. Now, importantly, when you're talking about any skill in terms of a competency or a strength, you need to think to yourself, well, what is the premise of good decision-making? There's really something that you can just pop into Google, or if you wanted blow-by-blow, step-by-step examples, then you can click the link down below for one of the courses, which is in our description, where we break this down for lots of different skills. But to be honest with you, you seem, but to be honest with you, if you're reasonably confident, then just buff up your answer a little bit by looking this up in Google. Question number four, tell me about yourself and walk me through your CV. Now, the tell me about yourself question is probably the one that most people dread because all of a sudden they're sitting there trying to think to themselves, who am I? What should I tell you about myself? Should I tell you about what I did yesterday? Should I tell you about what my hopes and dreams are? Now, a good way to prepare for this question is to have a structured answer. Now, the way that I have taught answering tell me about yourself for well over a decade now is who are you and what are you doing now? What have you done in the past three to five years? What would you like to do in the future? Work experience, extracurricular skills and activities, and then finally, hobbies and other things that you like to do. Now to be really good at doing this, this is something that requires some practice. One thing that I don't suggest that you do is try and answer this off the cuff. What generally tends to happen is when I ask people to tell me about themselves when they have one-to-one -one consults with me on Zoom is that they just tap out after about 15 or 20 seconds and they don't know what else to say. Hi, my name's Mike. I'm currently a bachelor's student studying science and Hi, my name's Mike. I'm currently a bachelor's student studying economics at Imperial University. Prior to this, I did my A-levels at Surrey and Guilds Grammar School where I got three A-levels. No, let's just scrap that. When you think about the second part of answering this question, which is walking me through your CV, this is pretty much the same thing. You're trying to walk somebody through in a chronological order based upon what you're doing now, what your work experience is, what your extracurricular activities and volunteering, and then what are your skills and interests. If you want to download this handout alongside a free CV template and many other things, then check out Application Success Secrets down in the description below. It's completely free for you to download. But one thing I really want to impress upon you is that nobody does a great personal introduction straight away. It takes practice, not a lot, maybe doing it three times, five times, trying to do it without a script because 
really it's about how you say it rather than what you say. If you deliver it in a really confident manner, you have a good opening and a good way that you close your personal introduction, which is why I tend to like to end it on hobbies or interests because it provides a really great talking point, particularly if you're doing a face-to-face -face interview. Question number five, tell me about a recent piece of business news or a great technology and how it would affect the job that you're working in or the clients that you deal with. Now, this is a more generalized way of looking at two different questions which we came across, which is tell me about a recent M&A deal and also tell me about a, a technology that you believe will be helpful for the audit industry. So really looking at these two things, we can look at commercial and business awareness and also technology and recent developments. Now, one thing that I highly recommend that you do, if you're not currently applying for jobs, but you're just watching this video because you're interested in doing this job or working at this company, is sign up for weekly bulletins from an industry news portal, whether that be something like Accountancy Age or the ICAEW website or a regulatory body, whatever country that you're working in, if you look up to see who is the regulatory body who's going to be delivering your professional qualification, as well as an industry news website that is churning out news as an aggregation service for the industry that you want to work in, whether that be more generalistically professional services or audit tax advisory or deals, then you should be up to date with what's going on within the industry. Technology questions are always a really good way to prepare. And in fact, if you read through KPMG's white papers, if you go and look at their technology consulting arm, or you look at their annual report, you'll be able to easily find out about new technology that they use because shock horror, they're gonna tell you all about it because they want to really bang on about the great technology that they're using, because that's a great way for them to attract customers. Now, I say weekly updates because you don't need to be fully up to date on a second by second basis or reading the Financial Times every day to really be able to answer this question comprehensively. What you do want to do is select a subject that you feel happy talking about and potentially could answer a question on, i.e. you could easily explain it to your mum or dad and then answer the questions that they may have. This is a really good way to frame this to make it easy for you to pick something out. Question number six, describe a time when you had to overcome a conflict or a challenge within a team. Now a conflict or a challenge is basically a disagreement on what to do or how to proceed with something. Now you would answer this using the star format and I think a really important way to think about resolving a conflict or a challenge is first of all, where were you? What were you doing? What was the challenge or conflict? And importantly, why is it significant? For example, say you're doing a project at university on a particular company that you need to carry out a piece of financial analysis on, but you can't agree on the company. Well, it's a significant conflict or challenge because if you guys can't agree, then you're not gonna be able to move forward for the project. So how did you actively listen to the other person's concerns? How did you make sure that they feel heard? How did you move forward to getting it resolved? Did you have a vote? Did you sit down and have an adult discussion about something? And then based upon that, what did you then do to make sure that you got the result that you needed to achieve in the project or the general workplace scenario? And finally, question number seven, give me a time when you had to use an analytical approach. Now really, this is a question about problem solving. Give me a time when you solved a problem, give me a time when you thought of a new and innovative way to do something. These are all the same types of problem. So you're gonna use your situation, task, action, result. When thinking about an analytical approach, a problem or a challenge, think about something that was difficult for you to do. It wasn't just something you fixed straight away, but maybe you had to go back and forth, back and forth a little bit. Maybe you had to say, look, I'll get back to you and go away and do your research. Think about something with the same level or similar level of difficulty to doing a university dissertation. 
A lot of times when I listen or read example scripts or people have answered this question, I tend to find the challenges are not really significant enough. So we really want to make sure that we can communicate that we have dealt with this in an analytical way because we had to get different sources of information. We had to, whether that be, you know, people, places, things, books, etc in order to enable us to solve this problem effectively and finally what was the result that you needed to achieve. So I guess the thing to end up on is what should you do next? Well, if you're looking for something that's really going to help you crack that interview, you can check out our 28 most common questions answered ebook down in the description below. Or if you want the most complete and useful toolkit for interviews that I've ever created, check out Interview Success Secrets. If you're thinking about your assessment center, then consider checking out our Acing Assessment Centers bundle. But for all of those things, stick with Jopardy English, go and have a look for the questions that you need to answer because the chances are it will be there in one of the many hundreds of free videos that we've made for you. Best of luck with your interview. If you've got one coming up, drop me a comment down below and let me know how you get on. Bye.